that's a bit better, right? So, I don't think I've ever done a video about this in the past, but let me talk about lenses and camera lenses in particular. Because I'm looking for a new lens myself. This current one shooting this video is a bit, it's a bit of like a Frankenstein. Yeah, that's probably the right word. And I need a new lens, but let me talk about my thought process and how I go about choosing the right lens. So, initially, you're going to be looking at prices. So you have the cheap lenses, let's say under 300 euro, and you can get like Sigmas, Tamrons, Rocky Nods, you know, a lot of those third party lenses, which are, some of them are great, and you can get a lot of kit lenses for around that price point, plus, you can often get like old Nikon lenses for a lot cheaper than that. They won't have an autofocus, but they're gonna be cheap. Then, let's talk about the more expensive side of price. So middle range will be anywhere from like, let's say 300 to 1200 euro. And that's where mid range, that's where like most of the really nice glass is found. It's not exclusive, but yeah. And then you have the more expensive lenses, which go anywhere upwards, like some of the Canon, I, I forget what they're called, the cinema lenses, they're like 5,000 euro each minimum. Yeah, and it just keeps on going up. So, pricing is what you need to establish first. Now, I shoot on a Fujifilm system, and Fujifilm glasses are uncomparable to any of the third party glasses. So, I definitely need to invest in the Fujifilm lens. And the problem is that most of them are at least 600 euro up to 1200 that's the price range so i'm looking at a lens currently that's 750 euro yeah it's a bit of an expensive lens then you need to realize the build quality there again for a price point so there's different brands there's different made in china lenses but a lot of Fujifilm lenses are made in japan which is perfect and they're really sturdy I love the old Nikon lenses, the old old ones, like I have ones from the 80s to 60s. They're fully metal, they're really heavy and they're really strong. But, and I'm not having to go like Canon or Nikon, the newer ones, a lot of them are plastic. And that just doesn't last, the rubber wears, so you need to take this into consideration. And also, with build quality, you need to consider weather sealing. I think that's the word. It's if you're allowed to use the lens in rain or will water get into the crease and get into inside the glass. Now, no lens is fully water sealed. They're mainly just, you know, drizzle resistant. But it's a thing to keep in mind if you're going to be doing wildlife photography or sports photography. You can't really choose the perfect conditions unlike model photography. And this will all depend on you and your needs. So I already mentioned this, but this is the third part. It's the content that you're going to be shooting, your needs. You need to decide what kind of photography you're into and what you really want to specialize in. And this is really crucial because there's thousands of different types of photography. So you have like street photography, you have street portraiture, you have studio work, you have random wedding films, you have wedding photos. And yeah, don't get me into the photo versus video world because different lenses, some of them are amazing for photos, but the autofocus is just too loud in videos. So you need to consider your the things that you want to be shooting. Then, <clears throat> when you know what you're going to be shooting, you need to decide what focal length will work best. So if you have like a APS-C or a crop sensor camera, like this one is a 1.56 crop sensor, you want to shoot a 50 mil lens for portrait, because that will give you around, you know, 75 to 85, depending on different aspects, which is perfect for making your portraits look really nice and flattering. So that's a very important thing. But if you want to shoot, let's say, macro, like close-ups, you need a macro lens. If you want to shoot street, most people shoot a 35mm street lens, which is a 50mm equivalent. Then if you want to shoot like landscapes, you want to shoot a wide lens. So there's photographers that go for like a 10 to 22mm, which is like a 50mm equivalent, really wide. And then there's like the telephoto lens, which are amazing for wildlife and for sports. But you also need to consider how fast their autofocus is, because that will play an aspect to it. So focal length is really important. The lens that I'm actually looking at is the 18 to 135mm OIS Fujifilm lens. And as I said, this lens goes for around 900 euro, but was reduced to 800. 
and you can get it on deals for $7.50 on the regular. And why I'm getting this lens is because I need a replacement for a zoom lens. And zoom lens is really important to me when I do travel films. Because I don't want to be carrying out a big backpack with like four or five different focal lengths. So I'm going for an overall zoom. It's an f3.5 minimum. So it's not going to be super shallow. But I can get a lot of range. And I can also shoot models. Because I don't shoot very wide open for my models. I like to shoot normally f5.6. Which is counterintuitive. But it really works for the model shoots that I go for. And yeah, there's other lenses as well that I'd like to look into if I'm going to dive into different types of photography. But this video is just kind of giving you a rundown of what things you should consider when you're looking to buy a new lens for your DSLR or your mirrorless or interchangeable lens camera. And I hope that you found some of this information useful and maybe like it'll open your mind. 